Uh, how you doing? Um, <clears throat> my name is Ryan Montgomery. Um, I'm a receiver coach at Fern Creek High School out of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, today, we're going to pretty much talk about um, some some receiver play, um, along with some of my philosophies that I that I have as a receiver coach, um, some of the ideas that I have as a receiver coach, and um, some of the other things that I I kind of bring to the table to uh, bring some continuity and some fun to the receiver position. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go through this. Uh, just let it play. A um, little bit of background about myself. Uh, obviously, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, my name is Ryan Montgomery. Born and raised in Canton, Ohio. Um, played high school football uh, at Camp McKinley High School. Uh, was fortunate enough to earn a scholarship to Kentucky State University in uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Um, uh, Kentucky State is actually a historically black college, better known as an HBCU. Um, I'm also affiliated with various uh, nonprofits. One of those nonprofits is I'm a director of partnerships and relations um, for Build Live Through Sports Network, which is basically uh, centered out of, out of Canton, Ohio. Um, at the moment, I am a technology teacher uh, at Jefferson County uh, School District. Um, uh, I'm also uh, doing some other things in the community as well. Uh, my, my coaching background um, is pretty, I guess you say, pretty extensive. Uh, I've been almost all over the world in a sense. Uh, it's pretty much started out in the Bahamas uh, for the Bahamas of American Football Federation back in 2008, uh, which was almost immediately after I graduated from high school. I moved down there uh, to pretty much help jumpstart the program down there in the Bahamas. Uh, and from uh, from that standpoint, I moved on to an advisor role, if you want to put it that way. And that's why I said from 2008 to 2016. So for the over those next, I don't know, four or five years, it's pretty much like an advisor, fly down there every now and then, make sure everything was okay, and then come back home. Um, my, I guess you said my U.S. starting time, uh, as far as a coach, was at Camp McKinley High School in 2009. Uh, got a great opportunity to coach at my alma mater. Um, under Coach Ryan Johnson <clears throat> um, for a couple of years. Um, then I moved to Columbus and met Keith Demme. Uh, he gave me an opportunity to coach at Columbus South for, for two seasons. And then uh, when we pretty much um, merged the high schools in Stark County, two high schools in Stark County, um, Kent McKinley High School and Timken High School, uh, I came back home and I was uh, the receiver coach under uh, Dan Reardon. Um, and then sometime, uh, during that winter of the 2017 season, um, I don't know something happened. And then I was, I was blessed with the opportunity to pretty much come down to Louisville, Kentucky, which was a huge, huge opportunity, uh, something different, mainly because it's a different state and it's actually me moving back to the state that I played college football in. So it was kind of, kind of cool, kind of scary at the same time. So Currently, I am the, again, I am the wide receiver coach at Fern Creek High School. Um, just a couple of things that I that I strongly believe in as far as my guys. One thing I do want to point out is you'll see uh, this logo at the bottom, um, and you'll see it almost on all my slides or anything like that. And it basically says, we own the night. Um, and that's one thing that I get my young men to pretty much believe in. You know what I'm saying? We own the night, no matter... If we play in one of the best teams in the country, the best team in the state, whatever, you know what I'm saying, no matter who's in the stands, it was a college coach or somebody else's parents, uh, I, I get the young men to believe and understand that nobody, uh, that everybody's pretty much there to watch us play, no matter what. They come to see the, the Farm Creek wide receivers play, no matter what anybody believes. Um, so we, 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 we preach, I preach that, they believe in it, and... and they hold it to the to the to the to the best if you want to put it that way. Um, so basic principles that I have: understand what it means to be a complete wide receiver. Uh, take pride in doing the thing that no one sees. Be technically and fundamentally sound. Control your actions. Be a step. Be a sponge. And most of all, be different. Um, I, I I put the be different in bold is because I say that so much to my guys. The, the main quote that I use is: it's hard to be different. What that means is it's hard to be to practice on time. It's hard to be in class on time. It's hard to go right when everybody else is going left. You know what I'm saying? So what you do is you take that um, life lesson and you apply it to, to sports. And so, you know, it's hard to finish through the line when you're tired. 
it's hard to catch a football and concentrate when it's raining and so on and so forth. So I just, I, I keep these principles right here for my guys. And some of them, most of them are pretty much self-explanatory, but the biggest one is to be different because, you know, if, if you if you keep doing the same thing that else, everybody else is doing nine times out of 10, you won't be successful. So uh, that's a major one right there. And so this is, uh, this is this past season's uh, receiving core. Um, and so what I've done uh, uh, over the past, I don't know, 10 years or something like that is I've, I've created somewhat of a fraternity, if you want to put it that way. And the fraternity is we on the night. You know what I'm saying? If you know anything about fraternities or whatnot, they all have a, a name. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that Greek name is. Well, in a sense, our Greek name is We Own the Night. And then essentially every single receiving core has a line name, if you want to put it that way. And so um, you just create the line name and you, you believe in it. And so last year's young men were known as the Dark Horses, um, mainly because a lot of unproven talent was in that room. Um, a lot of unknown talent was in that room. And a lot of guys were that were pretty much underrated and undermined. And so if you know the definition about the dark horse, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's 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 not really chosen to win, but it finds ways to win, no matter what. It does what exactly what it's supposed to do, but it finds ways to win. Um and so that was us. You know what I'm saying? We we were the unknown, <laughs> but we did our part um on the field, off the field, in the classroom, in the community to pretty much let everybody know that you know, so we would be a record, a force to be reckoned with. And um, I do this all the time. One tidbit I do want to, to add is uh, we, we we get shirts, as you can see. The young men have shirts. They get shirts. They get a poster. Um, they get uh, wristbands and things of that nature. And we also, as far as our uniform, the way we look, we wear the same thing. It's either black gloves, black cleats, white gloves, white cleats. Um, and the reason why I do that is mainly because, you know, it creates that 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 continuity, that brotherhood within the group. Um, it's not to separate us from the rest of the team at all. You know what I'm saying? The head coaches that I've, I've coached under, um, I bring it to them first during my interview process and let them understand, like, you know, so these are the things that I do um, and I have been doing. <clears throat> and they understand that it's not anything to pretty much separate these guys from the team. It's just my, my group, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it gets them to to buy into uh, them being better than what they think they are because they have something that's tangible that they can touch and stuff like that, whether it be the T-shirts or, or the uh, the uh, the posters and the wristbands, stuff like that. They have something they can walk around with uh, with pride that they own in a sense because they earned it. You know, these T-shirts and those posters, they're not, they don't get those until like the week of the first game. So it's almost like a pleasing process, in a, as you want to say, where they have to make it through the spring, have to make it through the fall, I'm sorry, make it through the summer and into the fall. If they don't make it, they don't get, you know what I'm saying, their, uh, their Greek letters, if you want to put it that way. So it's something that 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 <clears throat> majority of young men are excited about and you they talk about it all the time as far as like coach will be wearing next year. So um, it's just something to, to help out and, uh, you know, get guys to work a little bit harder and prove themselves. Um, <clears throat> some of the main stuff as far as receivers that I'm going to discuss, discuss today is it's going to be uh, receiver, like I said, receiver play. It's going to be stance to start, uh, things like that. Um, some of these clips are not my clips. I do have film that I can talk about and anything like that, but some of the clips that you will see are not my clips, but I will do my best to pretty much simulate what we do within those clips. <clears throat> um, first of the receiver stance, um, I'm a firm believer in the inside foot up. Uh, I know a lot of people have the outside foot up and things like that, but um, I count yards, not steps. Um, I think that if you have the outside foot up, you might count uh, steps. Uh, I'm a firm believer in yards. I want you to go X amount of yards and get to where you need to be, and hopefully the ball gets there on time. But I don't want you to to count four steps and then do A, B, and C, like, you know. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's steps are different. If you got a six foot guy compared to a five five guy, but well, their strides gonna be different. So I just I just count uh, yards instead of steps. Um, the seventy 
the eighty percent weight on the front foot kind of thing. It all depends on who the receiver is. Um, I got some film to show that kind of stuff, but it all depends on what the receiver is. Some guys, um, if they put too much weight on the front foot, they they end up fall stepping a lot, either with the front foot, the back foot, so on and so forth. Obviously, when it comes down to you know, say flexing the hips and everything, and bending the knees, so so proper front knee bend, shoulders over knees, knees over toes, a forward body lean. But you don't want your guy leaning too too much. Um, some some guys lean as at, at they, I don't know, folding paper leaning, and it looks weird. Then you have some guys that stand straight up, looking like a tree. Then you got guys that are pretty much like forty five degrees. So you just gotta play around with it and find out what's best for your guy. You know, so you can't always have everybody doing the same thing because guys explode differently. This isn't track where everybody has a block. So um, the number eight, as far as the toes straight, back heel, twists off the ground, that's the one of the most difficult things to teach as a coach. I've been to many, many clinics. Some coaches can do it. Some coaches can't. Um, I, as long as it doesn't hurt the young man's start, I don't really say much about it. I'm going to point that out here in the video in a second. Um, some young men, they can actually have the toe pointed inside and then at the step of the ball, turn it forward really, really quickly and move forward and, and run their route. Some young men can't. Um, I've, 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 I've talked to uh, Heartline at Ohio State. You know, we actually played against each other when we were in high school. And he was like, man, if you got a guy that can get the job done, you can critique it, but you're not going to fix it. You know what I mean? So... You just, you just take your, take your wins and your losses. Um, the hands, the hands thing, it all depends on, you know, the coverage. I'm, I'm a guy that I like my, I like the receiver's hands down to the side, but I like their hands to be ready as well. I don't want them to have their hands down to the side and it's pretty much a situation of they might get their chest beat in. I don't need that. I need your hands down to the side and ready. Now, if you can't have your hands ready, then obviously you're going to, you know, sort of put them up like the old school receivers, like you are good into a boxing act. But I don't want you to clench your fist and hold them tight or anything like that. But <clears throat> be real relaxed um, at that position. Uh, head is always looking at the ball. That's a, a, a cardinal rule. If you don't do that, it's a cardinal sin. If I can say that as well. Um, and we we actually practice that a lot um, with with the quarterbacks with um, stance and start things of that nature to where there is no snap. There's no 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 cage or anything like that. When the ball moves, you move. And so I do that, man, because you know if we play in a big game, you're not going to be able to hear anything anyway. So what's the point of learning what the, uh, the snap count is? Just when the ball moves, you move. No matter if it's a center snapping it wrong or right, when the ball moves, you move, period. So um, Here's a, some pictures um, as, far, as far as what I mean. <clears throat> so this is what you typically see out of some young receivers. Um, this is what you're looking for, in my opinion. Let me show you. This is what I'm looking for. Um, again, flat back, anything like that, knee bend. Everything's bent in a sense, you know what I'm saying? A little flex in the hips, you know what I'm saying? Nice center as far as in, in the back end and whatnot. Um, and his hands are ready. Now, I know a lot of young men like to uh, uh, cross their hands on their knees or roll their hands, stuff like that. Not at firm feet. I just, not at firm feet. You, you're not going to do that. I mean, I don't like when guys have their hand crossed across their knees or when they roll on them like, you know what I'm saying, you, you about to go in motion because it, it drives me crazy. Like, you don't need to do that. If you need to psych yourself up at the line of scrimmage to go forward, then, you know, go, I don't know what to tell you. Go, go, I don't know. Go be a pump returner somewhere else or something. But um, I knew my guys would be very comfortable. This doesn't look comfortable. This looks comfortable to me. I mean, hopefully he's comfortable, but um, I need my guys to be comfortable um, and, and not so much pressure here and not a whole lot of pressure in the back. As here, you can see everything is straight up and down almost, like, you know what I'm saying? Because the first thing he's going to do is lean anyway. If, you know what I'm saying? Next thing he's going to do is drop his hands, you know what I'm saying? And he's going to actually try to, he's probably most likely going to fall step anyway. So um, efficiency of movement, eliminate the false step. And I'll show that here in a second. You know, this, this, this isn't it. This is a little bit okay. It just depends on the guy. Everybody's going to look a little bit different. <clears throat> and so this is one of the drills that we do. Um, obviously, this is not Fern Creek. But one thing that I will show is, um, if I can, it's, it's almost what I do as well. Only difference is, imagine me being here on this line, and that's going that way. 
Um, so it's just guys, <clears throat> guys on the line, me barking out cadence, whatever the cadence are every blue moon. But when the ball move, they move. If they move before the ball, there's a you know saying there's a consequence, there's a penalty. Um, and then what I was talking about as far as the toe, whatnot. If you look at this young man right here, his toe is pointed this way, and this is a Division One football player. You know what I'm saying? He probably on scholarship, so on and so forth. But as you can see, you know what I'm saying? The first thing he does is points his toe forward and goes forward. Now, I'm not really sure if the receiver coach is is, is, is okay with that. If he doesn't like it, I, I'm not in that room. But like I said, sometimes you got a situation where you got a guy that can do this and still run a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, or 4-3, or so forth. So you can harp on it, beat it up, whatever you want to during the, during the stance to start. But at the end of the day, your receiver is going to do exactly what he's comfortable with doing to the T. Um, and so with me, getting back to the drill, this is just a stance to start drill. We work on the stance. And then as far as the start goes, um, for us, it'll be a five-yard sprint. Like all out a hard five-yard sprint just to get them used to getting up the line of scrimmage and, you know what I'm saying, exploding for those first three to four steps. And then we'll go from there. Again, I mentioned before, as far as rolling the hands, Again, I they, that it's they get paid the big, big bucks and he's getting the free education so he can do what he wants to at the next level. But <clears throat> again, the key to it is looking in at the ball. I'm not sure what he's doing, but normally I would just be barking out cadence to get them to try to jump. You know what I'm saying? I might do the old school uh, of Peyton Manning as far as like shifting my body weight and you know what I'm saying getting real loud or whatnot, just so they can false, you know what I'm false step or, or, or jump off sides or whatnot. Just to make it happen. Again, I point out one more time. You got two guys right here. You know what I'm saying? Toe pointed this way, toe pointed this way. First thing they're gonna do, point it straight. I mean, again, you can harp on it, you can beat the dead horse all you want to. When it comes down to it, if they're gonna do it, <laughs> there's nothing you can do to fix it. You you can't. You know what I mean? Just try to correct it, but it, when when the lights come on, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. <laughs> And so this is one of our drills as far as dance to start. It's just like this, um, nothing major. And we do this at the at the beginning. As soon as we get done stretching, this is the first thing we do as far as like EDDs or everyday drills. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of anything else because you got to learn how to get off the ball in order to go uh, downfield anyway. <clears throat> and we'll do it just like this as well. You know what I'm saying? They'll go down. Well, I'm going to say the right way. We'll go across. Then we'll come back up the field or come back down the field just so they can have both feet, so on and so forth. And so we'll go this way, he will come back, and then I'll switch sides. We'll do it but down, then back again. And that's our stance to start. So here's some, I got some some films, some old films, a new film. Here's some film of it and in, in, in live in a person. Um, as far as the different stances. Now you you got uh, this is of course this is when I coached at Cam McKinley. You have four guys on the field that went to division one. And you know what I'm saying? They all did things differently. You got University of Akron, you got West Virginia, you got Stinson down in Florida, you got the University of Buffalo. So, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they all look different. If you go back to the, the to the picture, here's the guy that probably looks the best if you want to put it that way. You know what I'm saying? But you got, you know what I'm saying, four six on a good day, legit four two, four three, four four, four five, four six. And so my main thing was, can you get from here to here faster than him? Can he get here? It was, it was always a foot race. And so after a while, you just said, man, let's get the job done. And so uh, <clears throat> we're going to watch this guy right here because he's a typical one. Then we'll watch Jeff uh, after that. But as you can see, Zach's foot is painted and we point, pointed this way towards the sideline. And you're going to see, you're going to change it right then and there. Easy. You know what I mean? Like I said, when the lights come on, they're gonna do what they they're gonna do what's comfortable to them. You know what I mean? Um, so this looks exactly like the picture. Uh, nothing wrong with it in my eyes. Hands down to the side, looking at the ball, good base, and everything like that. Ready to explore the football, the foot race. You know what I mean? And that's all you're looking for. <clears throat> now you got the two. I just call them the two stick figures right here. But both of these young men right here, you probably couldn't guard at all. Like, he's one of the fastest probably ever to come out of McKinley. Um, and he's right behind him. These two guys right here were, were electric. And, you know what I'm saying, you talk about a 100-meter guy that won 100 meters without even stretching in the state. He was incredible. 
And so teaching Jeff how to run or get into a stance, I mean, after a while, I just said forget. You know what I mean? But as you can see, it, it, man, he got wheels. And now you don't let a guy get away with stuff. Like, we don't mind it. Now, we dare practice this stuff. But after a while, like I said, when the lights come on, what you going to do? So there's nothing we can do about it. Same thing with T-Bert. The same thing with, with, with Butch. Uh, it's just pretty much just telling him, like, hey, man, understand this. Your first move that you're going to make, since this leg is, is straight, you're going to bend it. You're going to bend it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to bend it. Not only are you going to bend it, but you're going to drop your center of gravity. You know what I'm saying? You can watch them all sink down. Sink down. T-Bird sink down. Then Butch sink down. You know what I mean? And we practice this every single day. And so, you know what I mean? You just harp on it, harp on it, harp on it, but you don't be a dead horse. You don't become counterproductive by trying to be the dead horse. It's the same thing. This is more recent film or the school that I'm at now. You got two receivers here. <clears throat> you can see bent over like it's supposed to be a little bit. Leg is straight. You know what I'm saying? You got a guy right here that 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 decent, decent stance and everything. Watch what he does. Picks up that front foot and put it right back down. He ain't went nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And so some of the things that I've done as far as to help with that, I let it roll a little bit. Some of the things that I've done to help with that is I actually put a bag right here that they have to step over. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of things you can do to help the young man eliminate false steps. Just put a bag in front of them, put a hurdle in front of them. Um, I'll put, truthfully, you know what I'm saying, not trying to hurt the young man, but I've actually put footballs in front of them. To where if they step on that football, I mean, they're not going to step on it again. <clears throat> or a basketball. Something that will pretty much trigger in their mind to, to, to stop doing it. You know, you're not trying to hurt them, but you're just trying to help them understand, you know what I'm saying, eliminate the false steps. Um, but this young man right here, you know what I'm saying, boom, that false step right there. Pick that back foot up and put it right back in the ground. Didn't go anywhere. He's already taken almost two and a half steps, and he's just taken one. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> we we corrected this. I think this is one of our first, our early on games, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Might have been like, I don't know, week three or something like that. And this is during COVID, so we really didn't have practice as much. And these two guys were new. And so it, it, it took a lot. It took a whole lot. But we corrected it later on down, this, down the line as far as the season goes. <clears throat> and this is uh, this is for the big guys. So this is Willie Neal. Um, he was there, I think, one of my first seasons at Fern Creek. And you can see, straight as a statue. Now, what's wild is you're going to see him again in the video, and you're going to see his stance is totally different. So this is during a scrimmage. And he did the same thing that Jeff and the rest of those guys did. See him drop a center of gravity right there. As soon as he gets it going, everything drops. And so when you watch film with your guys, and you watch film, the, the key to it is watch practice. Because when we, when we watch this over and over and over, you can critique, okay, well, you should have ran a route this way, so on and so forth. But the main thing is talk about their stance and their start. If you practice it, talk about it. And so we talked about this over and over and over and over, and pretty soon he understood, you know what I mean? He understood that he needed to bend his knees just a little bit more to help him explode. Um, if, you, if, I, if I could switch this around and put Josh, like you can almost see, like, this is his stance right here. That's his front foot. That's his back foot. You know what I mean? His stance was so wide, it, it, it drove me crazy. And so I actually had to talk to him about um, fixing his stance and become a little bit better, uh, uh, close down his base so he can get off the ball a little bit more. <clears throat> and you'll see these guys, again, in the film, uh, later films, as far as how they, they progressed and got better as far as their stance and their start. Um. Again, before we move to the blocking, uh, all these are my EDDs um, before we even get into one-on-ones, anything like that. So the main thing is you pra we practice every single day. And if it's not in the practice plan for us to have EDDs that day, maybe we might have a special teams day during the individual time in a sense, we go off a of pre-practice. <laughs> I'm going to get in my stance and my, and my start. I'm going to get in my block and I'm going to get in my releases somehow, some way, no matter what. But... Um, <clears throat> When it comes down to the stance that starts to be creative, uh, don't just do it the same way. Like my my drill, every day for stance to start is totally different every single day because you don't want to be, uh, I guess, a robot in the sense because guys get bored. 
and, and there's no there's no learning to it because they're gonna keep making the same mistakes unless you try to change something up. So bags, balls, uh, 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 combs, ladders, so on and so forth, use them. If your school has those, don't just let them sit in the shed or in the barn or where you gotta keep them. Use them. Use them. Um, moving on to the next drill. Now these are these are my drills that go right in line. So we'll do stance to start, and then we'll go into blocking. Uh, blocking is is I think one of the one of the most underrated things that are as far as coached. You know what I'm saying in high school football when it comes down to the receivers. It might be when it comes down to the skill position period, because a lot of young men think that blocking is is gotta be I gotta be a killer. You know what I mean? When all in all actuality, blocking is just mainly about just being in the right place and holding your water. Like it says, be physical, <clears throat> and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show some tidbits on it, what I mean by that. But nobody needs you to be able to pick up somebody. Just be in the way and hold your water. There's going to be time when you can actually, you know what I'm saying, as we say in football, punk your defender <laughs> or the guy in front of you, which is no issue. But the main thing is just hold your water. I mean, you, two, three seconds, if you hold your water, your job is done because the running back should be running by you, Okay. Now, there's our times, and you'll see on the film, um, I'm a big fan of being a bully. I need my guys to be a bully. And you can call that the small man complex or anything like that because I'm a little guy, so I used to, you know, do what I needed to do to the defender, and so I just turned that over as far as a coach. So um, these are the main principles for that. Be physical, have a will to, and want to. Understand leverage and angles, close the gap, hot feet, um, hot feet is like pounding the table, buzzing your feet, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll get into everything in a minute. Have active hands. Never look back for the ball carrier. Um, the defender tells you where the ball carrier is. Block the defender where he wants to go, and the ball carrier makes a stop block correct. All in all, you know what I'm saying? These are my drills, and you'll see these in a second. All in all, what that means is when you sit in front of your guy, don't stop your feet, don't stop your hands. Let him tell you where he wants to go and take it. This isn't zone blocking as far as for alignment. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty much if that defender is a is a if that DB or safety wants to seal the edge and make sure that the the running back doesn't get outside, okay. You put yourself in position to where you drive him out of bounds. If you you're blocking a linebacker and he's trying to fight inside and, and, and scrape over the top, okay, you get in, you get on him. Put your hands on him and you drive him. You know what I'm saying? Just keep going. No matter what, who cares? Take him where he wants to go. If you do it fast enough and, the, and, and with some type of physicality, you would take him past the play or out of the play, one of the two. And so <clears throat> that's what the, it, all in all is what it means. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys like, you know what I'm saying, latch on and do certain things. But the main thing is if you got a guy that's going to latch on, especially in high school, if you tell a young man to latch on, he's going to hold that guy every single time. You don't want to tell him to latch on. Just be in the way, be in good position, and then you show him where to put his hands at. I know some coaches say, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, what they it, thumbs <clears throat> under the breastplate kind of stuff, or, or, you know what I'm saying, grab the shoulder pads and so on and so forth. Well, again, you're using words, especially with young men in high school, you know what I'm saying, 14, 15, 16 year olds, when they hear grab, they're going to grab. You know, they're going to bring period. You know what I'm saying? That's for the lineman. But for the skilled guys, you really don't want them to grab an assist because if the game is on the line and that running back breaks for 40 to get a key first down and your guy, quote, unquote, grab, and it comes back, you're going to be very upset. And so instead of me saying grab, I just say, hey, man, get yourself in position. Be physical, hold your water. Let him be the aggressor. But when he becomes to be, be the aggressor, you stand your ground, be physical, and take him where he want to go, Period. And I saw, I saw that. Um, <clears throat> so see, these are some of the drills, and you'll see it here in a second. Um, and I want to do my best to simulate it through the video. But close and sit, close and sit and punch, close sit, punch, and take the defender where he wants to go. And, and again, I'll do my best to show it through these films here in a second. <clears throat> um, so this is the Michigan. This is the best I could come up with. But this is almost exactly what we do. Just imagine the receivers being on this line instead of right here. Um, and imagine me being over here with a football, you know what I'm saying? Or me being back here with a whistle or something like that. And so what happened is they will be in a stance, legit, you know what I'm saying? Ball's here, 
you know what I'm saying? This foot is up or anything like that. And so this is the first one we'll do where they'll come up to the, to the guy and they'll literally buzz their feet just like this. Buzz their feet, you know what I'm saying? Looking just like this right here. And um, I'll blow a whistle. And when I blow my whistle, they'll punch the bag. But they'll keep their hands ready. You know what I'm saying? But they'll punch the bag. I blow the whistle again. They'll punch the bag. Blow the whistle again. They'll punch the bag. But their feet never stop. And what that simulates is you pretty much making contact, being physical, but you're not the aggressor. You know what I'm saying? You're pretty much stunning this guy to make sure that he understands that you're not there, just be out there, that you want to make contact and let him know. Um, I'm not a fan of, I see it in different films, I'm not a fan of when they come out here and you see uh, guys fully extend. Like I tell receivers all the time, you never want to fully extend because it's like a boxing match. You've never seen a boxer fully extend unless he can know he's about to knock the guy out. Well, you ain't gonna knock him out. He got a helmet on. So you punch, almost like this. You punch, you punch, you punch, you punch. And so, again, what they'll do is they'll come up. You know what I'm saying? This is our sitting clothes. They'll punch on the whistle, punch on the whistle, and then they'll go back. <clears throat> then what happens is I come over here and they switch feet, and then we'll do it again. Um, so the next drill is... Um, as far as basically taking the defender where he wants to go. So we'll come up <clears throat> and say, say the defender wants to go to the right. So what happened is they come up, they buzz their feet, buzz their feet. I blow the whistle once, they'll punch the bag and, and then just keep the feet going. Then I'll, next time I blow the whistle, they'll punch with their, with their hand, their left hand, their right hand. So in this sense right here, he'll punch the bag with this hand right here, pretty much trying to simulate this guy turning this way, and now that the receiver be here, blocking him, you know what I'm saying, his back will be here, and then what they'll do is, I blow the whistle, they'll buzz the feet again, they'll punch the bag, buzz again, punch the bag. I know it's kind of hard to, to simulate it like this, but I'll show you in the film. Um, and then what'll happen is, we do it the other way as well. So what'll happen, they'll come up, I blow the whistle, then he'll punch with this hand, and the defender move here, and then he'll come here and be like in this position as far as him blocking him. Um, and that's pretty much just simulating you taking him where he wants to go. And then you pretty much looking just like this um, and making sure he doesn't run past you or run over you. Um, I got a little bit of it in the, in the, in the film in a second. I can show you what I mean. But I, like I said, I don't want any of my guys to be the aggressor at all. If he want to try to run you over, so what? Let him run you over. You know, some people think that's crazy. But again, it goes back to some of the principles. I said, do the things that nobody else wants to see. If he runs you over and that running back is around the body, who cares? There's not many corners or, or safeties in the, in, the, in the world that can run through a, the, uh, a receiver and still make the tackle. They might be able to run through a lineman and make the tackle because the ball still being handed off. But when it's outside play like this, it's not that many guys that can run through a DV, I'm sorry, run through a receiver and make the tackle. Now, if you're talking about screens, something like that, that's totally different. I'm talking about pure dive play or off tackle, something like that. Not that many. And if they do, it's okay. We run the play again. You just make sure you hold your water next time. <clears throat> so here's some videos of, of, of uh, I guess you can say, blocking. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, I'm a fan of being a bully. I need my guys to be bullies. So this is one guy right here, you know what I'm saying, as far as you block until the whistle blows. And then a little bit after that. Because the only thing you can do is get a warning. You know, you're going to warn you the first time. So here's the running back, and here's the guy downfield blocking. Running back is down, but so what? Finishing. You know what I'm saying? Plain and simple. Just because I tell my guys all the time, just because this guy right here may not want to play, just because this guy right here may want to take a playoff, you never take a playoff. You know what I'm saying? And you let them know and understand that I'm here for four quarters. You know what I'm saying? The one thing that'll never happen that you see nowadays, I go back to this, <clears throat> one thing that you will never see from one of my receivers is nowadays you'll see a guy stand over this dude right here, look at him, and say something to him out of your pocket, anything like that. No, we don't got time for that. You walk away. And I don't I don't tell my guys to run away. I tell them to walk away. Because nine times out of ten, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have a ref come up to you. So if you run away, you're going to look guilty. Walk away and just get and make sure you know he's coming. Like I forewarn my guys because I know exactly what's going to happen. And it's okay. Um, because for four quarters, this guy needs to understand that you're going to be there. 
whether you're on this side of the ball, this side of the ball, in the slot, whatever, these four or five guys in the back you need to understand that they're gonna have a fight on their hands for 48 minutes. And so I'm 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 always promoting this. You know what I'm saying? I and I'm I'm a stickler. First 15 is on me, but it has to be in the first quarter. First 15 yard penalty is on me. If it's in the second quarter, depending on the situation, I'll take it. But you know what I'm saying? Some I know the head coach is probably gonna see this. He probably like, man, goodness, but it's truth. I tell my guys, man, the first 15 is on me. And it's not to be dirty, because this isn't dirty. This is blocking. You know what I'm saying? Now, did, did Zach get penalized for this? No. But that guy, man, he, he, man, he didn't like it. But nothing he can do about it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody seen it. You know what I mean? It's over. <clears throat> so, um, this, and we're going to look at this young man right here. Then we're going to look at Willie Neal. You got Josh Robinson and William Neal. So, the drills I talked about, as far as running up to the defender, buzzing your feet, punching, taking the way you want to be, and everything like that. You're going to see that right here in this film. So we watch Josh first, and you'll see everything <clears throat> um, live and in person. And so simple, simple running play, you know what I'm saying? Simple dive play right up the middle. Nothing to do with us. But the main thing is, and Josh kind of did it wrong because he kind of like uh, put his butt in the hole, and I don't like that, but it's okay. The defender chose his own path already. So, spread off the ball, sit down, don't, you know what I'm saying, move your feet, move your feet, punch, and now you secure. I mean, it's, 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 it's simple, but the main thing about it is it's, it's all it is. So, I slow it down a little bit. So, you sprint to the defender about two, three yards away. You get yourself together, hands up. I don't like his base, but, you know what I'm saying, it is what it is. Don't hop around. That's one thing I will say. You don't want your guys to hop around. You pretty much just want them to buzz their feet and almost like slide a little bit. But <clears throat> you shoot, and now since he wants to be an aggressor, you just hold your water. That's all you got to do. You don't need to do anything else. And so as I mentioned before, you know what I'm saying, this is a good block because if he was to break that tackle, he has his security. I'm going to tell you how. He has his security and that running back can go right here down the field. So as I mentioned before, when a defender chooses his path, whether it's inside or outside, in the drill, they'll punch with their right hand and their left hand. If you watch Josh's right hand, this hand right here, you're going to see him punch that guy and pretty much secure him to where if he wants to be out here, you're going to stay out here. So he punches, then right there. You know what I'm saying? Now he puts that hand on that shoulder and applies pressure. <clears throat> now, it's, it doesn't seem like much. But the main thing is the whistle was blown. But the main thing is you can almost see him replacing this guy. You know what I'm saying? Because in the beginning, you know what I'm saying, they were almost head up, so on and so forth. But he makes contact. You know what I'm saying? God puts it back. So now Josh's going to put his right hand on that shoulder pad right there, on that chest plate, and make sure he's secured. He wants to be to the outside, secure him to the outside. I don't need you to push him. As you can see, he's not going to even push him. He just secured him. Boom. Make sure he stayed there. And then if the, if the play continued, he replaced him. He put his um he he would be right here and the defender would be right here. That's one look at it. <clears throat> now this is when you got a guy that's chasing that's chasing the play. Again, you look at this this defender and this receiver, looking at Willie Neal. So the guy he the DB's gonna backpedal and try to chase the play. There's no point of us trying to, you know what I mean, beat him up, anything like that. If he wants to go here, take him. It's okay. If he makes a tackle, he's going to get ran over. So, again, Willie Neal comes up to him, don't stop his feet, and boom. Now it's just more so about you got to sprint and get in front of him and don't lose the battle. Again, you don't need a kill shot. A lot of people are like, man, you need a kill shot. No, you don't. The main thing is you need a receiver that's going to be active and understand what his job is. That's it. Now, it looks a little bit different from this angle. <clears throat> Let it play a little bit. So now you can see him slide like he's playing basketball. Now, I don't know, I'll tell you this right now. I never teach this. As far as him crossing over, oh, man, I saw no film. I lost my mind. But I never teach my guys to cross over. Because if you trip and fall, it's over. But he slides. <clears throat> Once he makes contact, he loses him. 
Now, I understand, we don't, when I do my blocking drills, there is no, we're moving. You know what I'm saying? It's all stationary. I don't want to simulate a guy moving because, for one, I don't need my guys tired. Because the hardest thing for young men to do, especially in high school, to, to do is to learn why they're tired. And so we watch film. And I tell them, like, see, we watch this film over and over and over. And I tell them, if you lose your guy, just sprint and get rid of him. You know what I mean? And so this is a good example that I showed them for the past few years is when you lose your guy, you continue to battle. You don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what's going on and he doesn't. So right here, Willie Neal loses him. So it's just like a defender. When a DB loses a receiver, what does he do? Turn and sprint right to the receiver on the go route. He ain't looking for the ball no more, none of that. So what is he going to do? All out sprint. You know what I'm saying? Lost him. But he knows he's going in here, and he knows he can't allow him to go in there. So forget everything else. Forget the technique. All out sprint, and now I'm just pushing and then taking him out of the play. And then, yeah, now he's upset, but what you do? You walk away. Like, literally, like, people think I joke when I say that. Like, I, I literally 100% teach my guys, you're going to walk away. I don't need you to jog away when you beat somebody up. Don't walk away. It's okay. <clears throat> um, I think this is from last year. And this this is the, the the bully part of it and doing it in a technique savvy kind of way. Like I mentioned before, we watch a lot of films, so we know what the defenders are going to do nine times out of ten, how they're going to play certain times or whatever. So he knew what was going to happen as far as this guy, and so he just shot his load. And, you know what I mean, he won the battle. But being aggressive isn't the key. Being under control is the key. But this young man right here is pretty much like, a bully in in a, in, a, in a midget's body. He's something wrong with him. But <clears throat> size him up. The main thing is he knows he got to take care of this guy. But the thing is that to, to, to remember is, look where the ball's going. Ball's going this way. You know what I'm saying? He's blocking a guy that's over here. It doesn't matter to me. I don't really care. He got in trouble and he didn't. You block your guy. Who's ever in your way, you block him. So what Frogger did, he ended up just understanding that, okay, this guy wants to be outside, leave him outside. He doesn't care about the play, okay, leave him outside. So instead of me, instead of him applying pressure and putting that hand on, anything like that, he just went up to him and just destroyed him. Now, I will say this, and we talked about it during the film, I don't know what he was doing, faking inside, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that was, I don't know. But it worked because, as you can see, and I got no problem with this, none. If you can get a defender, now mind you, he's in great position. This is still the drill. This isn't outside the drill, it's still the drill. Replaced him, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> got his hands on him. You can almost see right here, you know what I'm saying? He used his left hand and put that left hand on that shoulder right here. Because you can see the other hand, if I can go back a little bit, this is his left, this is his right hand. He had him use his right hand. That's his right hand right there. So he put his left hand on that shoulder to apply, apply pressure and make this guy turn just like this. And now it's pretty much it's finishing. Both hands bury me in the ground. You know what I mean? And 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 do I coach this? No. Is it okay? Absolutely. I don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? You get up, and you walk away. Plain and simple. Um, <clears throat> and, and so that's blocking. Again, the, the main thing is never to be the aggressor. Just be physical. Um, there, there's many guys that think that crack backing is being, is being aggressive, stuff like that. Like, I, I don't think so. Because my thing is, when it comes down to a crack block, you're not trying to kill the guy. You're just trying to create an alley for your running back to run to. So what you need to kill him for? Um, even when crack blocking, crack blocking was legal, I still didn't, I wasn't a fan of a hey, go in there and knock his helmet off. Like for what? I just need to go in there and make sure the running back is alley. If you do get a kill shot, take it. But if you don't, 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 don't do that. Because you go in there and try to kill a guy and you miss, I'm going to be upset. So go in there and hold your water. Plus you can also get a kill shot if you drive the guy. You don't have to like go all out because if you hurt yourself, then there's a point, waste a, waste a point. Um, and so those are the things when it comes down to uh, uh, blocking. Um, 
releases. Oh my goodness. The releases is probably one of the hardest things to teach because there's so many different releases. You know what I'm saying? You got the the wave release, the rip through release, the rip through release, the I don't even know. It's a it, it, hundred million different names that people give them, so like that. But for me, when it comes down to releases, footwork, hands, body control, and stacking. Period. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a whole lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You don't need a whole lot of stuff in your in your toolbox, because as people always say, you don't. All you need to do is, is be confident in your footwork, keep your hands moving, understand your body control. And once you do get beside that guy or you do get a chance to get on top of that guy in a sense, you stack him because you win. But <clears throat> what I mean by body control, and I'll tell you that, that what I mean by body control is a lot of young men, and you can see it on these, some of these, uh, these camp videos, um, when they do their release, they get way outside their base. Then they have to close their base again. Like, what's the point in that? What am I going way outside my base and closing my base again? Like, there's no point. Stay inside your base, and I'll show you what I mean. Stay inside your base, and you can do a lot of damage. You know what I'm saying? Because it's quick. You know what I'm saying? Everything is quick. So if you go outside your base, and they have to come back into it, 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 it a lot of wasted movement. A lot. And so that's where, you know what I'm saying, buzzing your feet and, and keep your hand moving going comes into play. Because the reason why we do these in this order is because when you're blocking, you're buzzing your feet and you're keeping your feet under you. You're not getting outside your base. And so to keep with the same philosophy, you go right into releases. And they, they see the difference as far as how it looks. Um, there's a couple of drills that I do as well, and I'll try to, try to show you those here in a second. Um, I don't think they have them here, but I'll try to show you them the best I can as far as using the screen. But um, <clears throat> so single move, um, double moves, and speed release. So single move is pretty much, you know what I'm saying, jab and go. You know what I'm saying? Jab left, go right. Jab right, go go left. Double move is jab right, jab left, go right. You know what I'm saying? So you did the double move, it, 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 it takes some work because you don't want your guys to pretty much be dancing. You know what I'm saying? Not too many guys can play football like when I'm a, like Muhammad Ali did boxing. So you, you can't be dancing in the line of scrimmage. You're killing us. Um, <clears throat> plus, you say like to keep it shuffle. Another one, you know, so when it comes down to the speed release, you just got to know, man, I'm better than him. I'm going to run right by. Literally, like, run right by the guy. No matter what, who cares? And the throw by is um, something that I actually stole. <laughs> I stole it from Heartline, man, some years ago. Years and years and years ago. It's pretty much like if you're trying to run a dig and the corner is hard-pressed inside, I think I might have it on film, but I'm, I may not. But <clears throat> So you just got to imagine... Um, the corner on the outside, you know what I'm saying, number one, and then, I'm sorry, the, the receiver on the outside, you got number one, and then there's a hard-pressed corner. When that guy takes off, when that receiver takes off downfield, 10, 11 yards, you know what I'm saying, you pretty much break it down, pound the table, and you're going to take either your right hand or your left hand, whichever one is closest to the inside. So if I'm going, if I'm the receiver on the right, and I'm sprinting, and the DB's on my left shoulder, you know what I'm saying, hip to hip or whatnot, I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to take my hand and put it right below his numbers on his jersey, right below his shoulder pad, and I'm going to push him, literally push him by me and then break on the inside. Um, I was trying to find a film to show it better, but we do that drill along with these, you know what I'm saying, every day, every single day. And the reason why you're doing it because you don't know when they're going to use this. You don't know when they're going to use this. You don't know when they're going to use this. You know what I'm saying? They use them when they want to. <clears throat> You're not going to sit there and say, all right, look, uh, they play cover two, so do this. Let the kids do it on their own. You give them the tools, let them go to work. You know what I'm saying? Let them go to work. And so we're going to watch Willie Neal. So this is the young man I showed you in the beginning who was standing straight up looking like a statue. So now this is later on in the season. You know what I'm saying? You can see that he, he understood what was going on. See, so <clears throat> I'll go back to the screen. So one of our main drills we do um, with this is I'll line up four cones, four of those flat cones, and the receiver be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to draw a stick figure, but the receiver be here. And what I do, what I, what I call it is they got to climb the ladder. So imagine them taking, so this would be his left foot, this would be his right foot, 
and they'll they'll climb the ladder. You know what I'm saying? All the way up, all the way up these two cones. I mean those four cones. And then when they get to the certain point, that's when they'll do a single move, jab to the right, go left, jab to the left. Um, sorry, jab to the right, go left, jab to the left, go right. Um, it's hard to simulate releases, you know what I'm saying, without putting them in a position where they're very, very uncomfortable. So again, I saw it again. So all I do is line up the four. It can be the four of cones, like regular cones that like stick off the ground, or the flat cones. It doesn't even matter that you get at Walmart. It doesn't even matter. Line up four of them. You can line up six of them. Because the main thing is you're teaching patience. You want your guys to be patient. And you know what I'm saying? Releases, it's all about patience. It's not about who can give it the fastest. It's about patience. So again, this is a, this is a right foot, left foot, right foot. And you, these are short, choppy steps. And when they get to the top, you know what I'm saying? That's when they'll jab one way and go to the next. Um, and you'll see it here a little bit as far as Willie Neal uh, climbing the ladder. <clears throat> so he's here. You'll see him climb the ladder. Bases, bases the same, then he'll jab, and then, you know what I'm saying, do his release as far as he'll knife through. Um, so again, when it comes to releases, I teach them all. Only thing I don't teach is uh, the the wave or the over the top or whatever people call it. I, I never teach that. So the, the main two that I teach is when they got a knife through and when they dip and rip through, uh, the club and the dip and rip through, and you'll see both of those here in a second. And so... You'll see him trying to tire for going slow, but you'll see him climb the ladder a little bit. Now it's, it's not a long thing because the main thing is you don't want guys dancing. You know what I mean? You don't want them dancing. But if you look at his base, you know what I'm saying? One, two, and then he goes. You know what I'm saying? I don't need you to be like uh, 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 dancing in place, but you are simulated <clears throat> as far as them chopping their feet, climbing that ladder. You know what I'm saying? But like I said in the game, they'll they'll have the techniques, but in the game, when the lights come on, they're gonna do what they wanna do. They're gonna do what they wanna do. So, but it's gonna be within what you taught them though. And so here's here's the thing with this climb the ladder, boom. And then as far as the knife through, he's gonna take this hand, club here, and then he's gonna take this and pretty much just knife through. So he'll club and aim for the forearm to the elbow. I'm sorry, the forearm, I'm sorry, the elbow to the wrist. I never tell my guys hit the forearm because you don't want to give them a, a plain uh, aiming point. That's dumb. You know what I'm saying? Because guys going to miss. So you say, hey, man, I need you to aim for the elbow to the wrist. Hit something. I don't care what it is. And when you hit it, you hit it violently. You know what I'm saying? You smack him like he's the teacher that gave you an F on your test. You smack him like he's Coach Montgomery for making you run all day in practice. You smack him violently and make it hurt. And so smack... You know what I'm saying? Knife through. The key is, and also where it is, you can see him as he put his hand, when he hits him over the, when he club, boom. When that other, when that left hand goes over, he's actually pushing it back down. Right there. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> he's pushing it back down, stack his guy, you know what I'm saying? And then over the top, catch the ball over the top. Now, we'll talk about this right here because we do this drill as well as far as how to catch a football over the top. Because normally, and I, I put this tidbit in there, normally what happened with high school players is they'll just fade. Coach, I had him beat, so I just faded. And now I'm not preferring creepy you won't. You know what I'm saying? Because when I mentioned it before, uh, and the one thing as far as some of our drills, when it comes down to catching the football, I need you, this guy right here, the receiver to be between the ball and the defender. Ball lands here, you're here, here's the defender. I don't care if he's slow or fast, I don't, I don't, it don't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? And you catch the ball over the over the shoulder because nobody can catch the ball here. Even if he's hip to hip with you, nobody can catch the ball here except for you in the grass. That's it. But when guys fade, it, it hurts that because then the defender, all he got to do is just stick his hands out there, he's knocking away. But nobody can stop this right here. Nobody. Unless he jumps and bats it down or he... Rips, rip through the left arm and so on and so forth. But nine times out of ten in high school, you don't have that many DBs that can do that. So again, I run through this one and then move on to the next one. Again, knife through, get back on top, far as stacking or, or whatever people call it, make the play.
You'll see it again as far as him climbing the ladder. Now, you got a hard press corner. And the one before, he wasn't hard pressed. Now, you got a hard press corner. What you going to do? Do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going slow. I apologize. But I just want you to see it. Boom, boom. Climb the ladder. And you know, so you, you you let them, you put it, you give them the tubes. Climb the ladder, and then he jabs. That, that, that's it. So if he had the four cones or six cones right there, that, that's all I needed right there. But you understand you got a hard press corner. You got a, you know what I'm saying? Unless you got press man, off man. Now, these things are taught. You know what I'm saying? I say, hey, impress man, you might have to do this. And off man, you might have to do this. So you got to be able to teach your guys the difference between the man and man coverages. We even do the, the climb ladder drill when it's covered too. I don't care. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> you need to have all of this in your, in your toolbox so that way when I'm sitting over here and say, hey, man, throw it to him. Who cares? And if the OC's like, man, he ain't going to be open. Yes, he is. I, you know that? Because we've been doing this all year. This is nothing. And so, um, again, you'll see him climb the ladder. Boom. Smacks him. Get the hand down. You know what I mean? He club. You can see it a whole lot better here. Boom. Get that hand down. Then finish him. Now, why did our quarterback go back here? Hey, man, we don't know. But the main thing is we got a pass interference, so it wasn't that bad. But <clears throat> sticking with the release drill, um, feet and hands, you know what I'm saying? You can see. Moving his feet is moving his hands. Never dead. Nothing's ever dead. Everything's always moving. You never, ever want to have dead feet, dead hands. Never. Because when he shoot, and I say this another tune too, what I teach my guys is we don't shoot first. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, the old joke is, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people uh, uh, congratulate the shooter. Like, man, we don't we don't shoot first. You know what I'm saying? Let them shoot. Because nine times ten, whoever shoot first is gonna lose, especially in football. Whoever shoots first is gonna lose because you showed your hand. And so we do a drill for our releases to where they're gonna actually be standing. <clears throat> they'll sprint to the defender in a sense. It's almost like block, the, the blocking drill we had. They'll sprint to the defender, and I had them chopping in place and pumping the arms <laughs> for a while, like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And then I'll, and I'll shoot my hands, and it'll simulate the defenders that you're in front of. They'll shoot their hands, and then boom. That's when they'll, you know what I'm saying, react in a certain way as far as getting through. Because I want them to have patience. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we do every day. We might do it during indie. We might do it during... Pre-practice here, it doesn't even matter. But the main thing is you're teaching them, teaching them patience. And so, again, boom, boom, boom. When he shoot, you shoot. As you can see, when a defender, try to rewind a little bit. When a defender puts his hands up, that's when he puts his hands up. That's when you make your move. No matter when it is. If that defender would have never put his hands up there, then you just pretty much going to speed release him. And they're going to understand. Like he ain't, coach ain't put his hands up. Okay, just run right by him, dude. Who cares? They just stand looking, looking silly. <clears throat> then, um, let me see. Like I said, boom. The key to it is when you when you do teach the knife technique or anything like that, because it, it, the knife technique is one of the hardest to teach the high school kids because the majority of them don't do this. They don't get that hand over the top and beat that hand down. I don't know why, but we we man we it's the one of the hardest for some reason. But if you teach the knife technique, the key to it is just like you want them to aim. From the elbow to the wrist, when they when they when they clubbing, you want them to aim for the elbow to the wrist when they smacking the hand down. Don't aim for the hand. I don't care about the hand. You know what I'm saying? Aim for the elbow to the wrist because if you do that, you're gonna hit something. You might just hit the palm of his hand or the back of his hand. I I don't care. Hit something and make sure that hand goes down and get rid of him. And so. And this guy right here plays for University of Louisville. <laughs> so we had some good practice that day as far as beating him up. And then, you know, so he just finished the route. Hopefully he catches football. <clears throat> so this is pretty much climbing. The now, this is 2000 and whatever year this was, 10. I taught the same thing back then. I just didn't use cones. I just talked. Well, I think we used numbers or something like that. But you're going to see him. You're going to see Zach climb the ladder, jab here, and then go up. So climb the ladder, boom. Go up. Again, it's off man, so it looks different. Like, if he was pressed, it would look like the, the previous video. But like you seen in the other video, when it's off man, it looks different. We don't dance at the line of scrimmage. 
we try to gain ground. So <clears throat> climb the ladder, boom. Then you pretty much just go make a play. But like I said before, the key to it is always stack your guy. Off man, no matter what. You get right back on top of him, apply pressure. Then, you know, just was a, a family rap, so I ain't going to show it just in case somebody sees it. But <clears throat> just you know, go get the football. Um, ball drills are, are, are essential. And I go then I actually found a video to show the exact same ball drills that I do. And these are the four ball drills um, that I do. You come to me, down the line, over the shoulder, and then high point. Um, and, and these two right here are the ones that uh, you, you have to incorporate early on. Because if you don't, by the time the season gets around, you'll be doing these and wasting a lot of time. So you need to, if you're going to do these right here, and I'll show you in the film, you incorporate these right here, you incorporate them sometime in the spring or early, early summer. Because by the time the season comes around, if you're trying to incorporate these or install these, it's, it's, it's not going to work. You go, it's going to drive you crazy. But to come to me is exactly what it is. I stand about five or six yards away, maybe a little bit further, and they jog to me and throw the football. Down the line is they'll literally be on a line, whether it's a, a yard line, <clears throat> excuse me, a yard line or a sideline, and they'll jog across and anything like that. Understand, none of these are full speed. None of my drills, and I'll say it the right way, none of my drills are full speed. They might be a burst, a five-yard burst, and then, okay, I just want you to catch the football. A five-yard burst, okay, I just want you to sit your butt down and be blocking. Five-yard burst, as far as the release, so on and so forth. Never full speed, 10 yards, because that, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the release. You've got the last game, which you have no release. So, <clears throat> here go the ball drills, and uh, you know what I'm saying, tell Dabo I say I'm sorry, but hey, it is what it is. But... <clears throat> They just come to me, just throw it to them. And now, it, I, I do it just like this, too. You can throw them a high ball, low ball, so on and so forth. What I don't do is um, I don't try to throw it outside their frame. I know some coaches do that, but if you try to throw it outside their frame, what's the point of them coming to you? Because they're going to stop their feet. You want to, you want the guy to pretty much run through the football is the key to it. Because you want them to have confidence. Run through the football, you know what I'm saying? And one key that I do teach is, did he do it? Yeah, he did it right here. So <clears throat> this is what I teach a lot. I usually call it kiss the football because I tell young men all the time, if you can see the football all the way to the tuck, that means you didn't drop it. And so early on, especially if I got some new receivers early on, I'll make them kiss the football. And then it goes back to the whole uh, running back days of high and tight. So the only way to get the football to where you can kiss it, is you got to bring it up to the face mask. And so, you know what I'm saying? You're teaching two different things, well, almost three different things in one drill. Because a lot of young men, especially freshmen and sophomores, they don't know how to hold a football. Let me say the right way. They don't know how to secure a football. And so what I do is I say, hey, when you catch it, I need you to kiss the football. I need you to take your face mask and put it on the ball. And so what they normally do is they bring it close to their breastplate, and they bring it up without me even teaching it. You know what I'm saying? So when they're running through traffic or whatever, they don't, they're not shocked by, oh, man, coach, I don't know how to hold football. Yes, you do. High and tight, four points. You put the ball, you know what I'm saying? Put the ball in there, hold it high and tight, run through people. <clears throat> and so that's one thing that I that I, that I incorporate in this in the beginning. Um, and just hand-eye coordination, make sure they see the football. And so we'll do this drill. Oh, one way they'll come down, you know what I'm saying? Then I go back down here and they'll come up this way. We do that. <clears throat> this isn't my down the line drill. This is when we go when I got some old heads, I get fancy like this, but this is the down the line drill. Something simple. Nice and easy. They'll jog, they'll literally jog down the line. Because the football. You know what I'm saying? And again, everything still applies. Catch the ball. Put that face mask on it, kiss the ball, see the ball. You know what I'm saying? As you can see him, you can see their guy. Now, these are, this is Clemson, the, the St. McKinley of Fern Creek. You know what I'm saying? They do the same thing that I want the receivers to do that at the high school level. And I tell guys all the time, the same drills you're doing, you're going to do at the next level, no matter if you believe it or not. And I've been doing these drills for 10, 11 years, mainly because of the same drills I did that I hated as well. But... um. That's all we do as far as down the line. 
And so they'll go down the line here, then go on this side and come back across. And this is just, you know what I'm saying, they're running different ways. You know what I'm saying? They might be running a slant. They might be running a dig. They might be running some kind of route that has them going across the field. And so just want to simulate that kind of stuff without having to throw the football way down the field over and over and over. So <clears throat> in, the, in the one film, you saw Willie Neal uh, do a release and then catch the ball with the outside shoulder. Now, we do this drill as well every single day, and the kids hate it. But they always ask, Coach, why we do this? We're never going to do it. I was like, you're going to do it one time, and I didn't realize you're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> this is one thing that I do use. It either be a pop-up right here, or I use a receiver, one of the two, just to get them working on the release. So they'll climb the ladder, punch the bag, inside, outside, it doesn't even matter to me. And then they'll stack the guy or stack the, stack the bag. He didn't do it here, but stack the bag. And then the key is for them to catch the football over the outside shoulder. Now, of course, obviously it's on me to throw the ball well, but the key is for them to catch the ball over the outside shoulder. Now, the main part is this, that no coach really understands. See his hands go above his face. That's what my, I teach my guys that as well. And you saw that as far as Willie Neal. You put your hands above your face. If you put your hands above your face, the ball is going to fall either in your hands or it's going to smack you on your wrist or your forearm. Either way, you're going to catch it. But if you drop your hands below your face or down by your waist or whatever, the likelihood of you dropping that ball is, is, is a lot. Your percentages as far as dropping that football goes up. So I always have God, man, put your hands up. I don't care if you're tall or short. Put your hands up. Catch the football. High point the football. Go get the football. And so that's when we do over the shoulder. That's the main thing as well. Just make, make sure they get their hands above their face to catch the ball. <clears throat> Same thing here. Yeah, this is a better job or better shot of what we actually what I actually look for. I want them to stack the guy and stay on a straight line, track the ball, and coach it over the outside shoulder like you see as far as like Willie Neal. We do this over and over and over again. Again, hands above the face. Um, <clears throat> and then let it fall in the bread basket, man. Let it make an easy catch. I like the, I like the guys make the hard catches look easy. You know what I'm saying? The people, again, you're going to do the things that nobody sees. Nobody sees you doing this. All they see you is, see you doing it in the end zone. That's all they care about. They don't care about this part right here. So, we do that drill. Then the high point, <clears throat> basically just going up and getting it. You know what I mean? Jump as high as you can, snatch it up the air. And one key to it is, as you'll see him do it, when you snatch it, when the, when the guy snatches the ball out the air, you twist. You know what I mean? And you you literally, you twist away. And you'll see it in the film um, here in a second. But I want my guy to literally twist away. You know what I'm saying? Land, and then, you know, that's it. Because that, that secured the catch. He can't do anything about that. And it's crazy because when you watch the college games now, the NFL games now, they're talking about that. <laughs> when guys are doing jump balls, they're talking about this. Now, when back in 2009, 10, 11, when I first started doing it, nobody even knew anything about it. But you catch it and you twist. This is 2000, whatever it is. is. So you actually see Zach do it at the end. <clears throat> see him jump up and you'll see him twist away. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, it, nothing major. Only thing I don't like is him actually high pointing the football. But he jumps and twists away. If I had better film, I would show it from the end zone view. But that's uh, that's all there's to it as far as in the game. We'll get to route running here in a second. Um, <clears throat> route running is simple. Uh, 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 for me, as far as the drills go, I'm not... I don't have a hundred million drills to show routes or anything like that. But my route, route, route running principles, attack leverage or stems, uh, square defenders up, um, two-way go, full route tree, work half man, <clears throat> excuse me, work half a man, flip his hips, body control, sink in and out of breaks. Um, of course, as always, you know what I'm saying, chest over the knee, um, knees over toes or chest over toes or however you want to call it to or say it to young men. Um, create separation, keep the separation. Um, this right here, 
is one that is probably pretty much going away. But only chop or drum feet or, or, or pound the table or how you want to cook uh, fast feet or feet fire and all that stuff like that when necessary. Because a lot of young men, when they're running their out routes, they pretty much, they, they break down when they don't need to. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just doing a speed cut, they might break down, which those days are going away because a lot of coaches, especially at the next level, want guys to know how to speed cut. But head and shoulder nods to sell routes, what all that is is if you got a guy that's running a corner route, sell the post, you run the corner. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with you got a young man that's running a, a comeback, you know what I'm saying? At, at eight, nine yards, you have him turn around, look at the quarterback like he's going vertical. At 12 yards, 14 yards, you know what I'm saying? Break down, come out of his break, and you'll see that all that stuff here in a second. Snap head and eyes around it immediately after the break. <clears throat> and this is this is one thing that um I've 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 had a issue with. And what I call it is I call it a whole man. Cause even though you can get your head around and you get everything around. That's why I say snap head and eyes around immediately. I want you to get everything around as far as your head, your shoulders, and your hips. Your legs might not get around, but if you get your head, shoulders, and your hips around, you know what I'm saying, nine times out of ten, you can become a whole man. You know what I'm saying? It looks, it sounds weird, but it, it's true. If you have a young man, not they can't do a standing still, but when they um, try to come out of a curl, when they, when they turn around, their feet might be in front of them just a little bit, but if they can get their head, shoulders, and hips around, Everything else is gonna come with it naturally anyway. So that's what I teach the guys. I don't say, hey man, get your feet around. Hey man, get your head, shoulders, and hips around. Because if they do that quickly and violently, everything else will come with it. Um now when it comes about two-way go, as far as full speed, I mean full route tree, that's because no matter where that defender is at, we're gonna run that route. If he's on the inside, he's on the outside, I don't care. Run the route. Um Square defenders up, and that that's only because like some teams might play a hard press inside cover three. They might play a hard press inside cover four. But if they do that, your first two steps need to be right down in the middle of him, even him up. If he keeps going inside, pressing inside, that's okay. Who cares? It's football. You got It's a game. It's not just one rep. So all you need to do is when you come to the side, like, hey, coach, and I can't. I can't st- get him get him head up and just keep going inside. Okay, well, cool. This is what we're gonna do then. You know, we'll adjust that as far as the blocking scheme and the pass throw stuff like that. But nine times out of ten, it's not too many teams that have a corner that's gonna pretty much force the the receiver to uh, I guess be on the outside. You know, saying so they're gonna try to either be head up, slightly inside, slightly outside, and go from there, playing whatever kind of technique or whatever kind of coverage. Um, as far as the drills. You got the G drill, the box drills, and the top of the route drill. And I'll show those here in a second. Um, the Z drill is pretty much, it looks just like this. Um, oh, no, I don't know how the Z drill. I'm trying. This is the box drill. So this is the four corners. <clears throat> and so I do this on days where we're trying to just, I guess you say, get everything together. Um, as far as our, our, our drills, I'll put a bag here, put a receiver here. But it's basically your old school four corners. Um, you come to the top, break down, break down, and cut. One thing I will say, you see me slip. One thing I want to point out is you never want your receiver to get outside his base, outside his frame. You know what I'm saying? Because now what's going to happen is he's going to pick this foot up and put it right back down nowhere. You know what I'm saying? At the high school level, he's going to pick that. He's going to put this foot up and go nowhere. Nowhere. And so you don't want him to be outside their frame then try to get across outside the frame, try to get across. So you see the last one, he shortened it up a little bit or he closed his base. Boom. He gave us a slow. I let it run it's a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So then you also got, you know what I'm saying? Some guys got the speed cut. <clears throat> so I do the same thing as far as I allow the guys. I'm going to go back. I apologize. So we'll do it like this right here, and then we'll pretty much speed cut it as well. You know what I'm saying? We'll break down like this, and then I'll be like, all right, to so track me. I need you to get around these cones. But the key to it is they can't step way out here. They have to hug the cone when they're doing it. They can't round it like they run on 200 meters. They got to hug the cone. 
You know what I'm saying? Or they still in second base or third base. So you got to hug the cone. And it's very, very difficult. It's not as easy as it looks. Because when guys are running full speed and it's a short distance like this, you can see who's athletic and who isn't. And so you can have them do this right here or you can have them um, speed cut it. So the Z that I was talking about was, our looks is he would come here. Then he would come here, here, and then here. That's why you call it a Z. And so same thing if he's on this side of the ball. So he would, he would start at this cone, come to this cone, come to this cone, come to that cone. And that's just working on hips. That's it. Change of direction, working on hips, stuff like that. Um, you just want to see your guys sink their hips, come in out of breaks. Because you're simulating the curl, simulating the curl. That's it. <clears throat> then again, you do the same thing here. They come to this cone, that cone, that cone. Um, to make things interesting sometimes, what I do is if I want to tire them out because they get to my nerves, I have them come here, go to this cone, and sprint back to that cone. And that that right there is a monster. It, it wears them out. You know what I'm saying? Because that sprint right there, it kills them every time because I don't know why they can't sprint through the line. Or another one is, um, and I apologize for using this, but we'll figure eight it. And so the receiver be right here, and they'll come up and figure eight this cone and sprint through. <laughs> But they can't, and like how I drew it up as far as them hugging that cone, it has to be just like that. Just like that. And those are just pretty much to keep their feet moving. You know what I'm saying? Whether they're speed cutting, coming out of a curl, running a dig route, you just want to teach your guy to never, ever stop their feet. You know what I mean? Because planting is okay, but sometimes you don't, don't stop your feet. Um, so here's some, some film. So this is the young, young man I'm talking about, Michael Robinson, I went to the University of Buffalo. Like, <clears throat> this is cheating because of you know, the, the coverage, but this is just pretty much selling the route. You know what I'm saying? He has a comeback. And you run to the butt on the comebacks. But that's this goes back to, you know what I'm saying, the Z drill. This goes back to the figure eight drill, and you just run. You know what I'm saying? Run as fast as you can. You know what I mean? Sell a vert, come out. You know what I mean? I think this was his junior year, maybe. And so you talk about a guy that was, I don't know, what was he, 6'1", and had a growth spurt. So uh, if you look at his hands, he drops his hands. And the reason why he drops his hands is because, truth be told, like we joked about it, he went from, I think he went from like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, to 6'1", in like two months. It was crazy. So I joke with him like, hey, man, your body, your brain doesn't know how tall you are. And so he used to always drop his hands, and it drove me nuts. And so you can actually see his hands come up late as far as the ball. You know what I'm saying? Because he just didn't realize how tall he was in those those couple months. But the key to it is, you know what I'm saying, coming out of the break as fast as you can. Um, never. And you can see he starts right here, and he ends right there. You know what I'm saying? Most guys, when they run a comeback, they, they almost run an out route. No. Come right back down your still. You know what I'm saying? Tyler throws a good ball, but you know what I'm saying? He's going to come right back down the stem, literally. Right back down the stem. Now, <clears throat> because what we teach, he's looking for that window. Did this guy come out here too much? If he did, I'll come straight down or whatever it came to be, or the quarterback won't throw in the football, but he's supposed to come right back down the stem just like this. Most people, when they teach the comeback, they come like this way. Like, nope. I want my guys to come right back down the stem, find the football, catch it, and, you know, do whatever they need to do with it after that. So this is what I mean about the speed cut as far as the four cones. We'll watch prayer, uh, prayer wise. You'll watch him pretty much run a 10 yard out <clears throat> and speed cut it. And it's just doing the cones and knowing, you know what I'm saying, knowing leverage, understanding what the route is. And you don't have to really, I could either beat the drum right here and beat the safety to sleep and lard him to sleep and put him in right here. Could he have done that? Absolutely. But what's the point? What's the point? I'm better than him. One key thing about running out, <clears throat> if you're teaching your out routes is, once you run your out, teach your guys to come back downhill. You know what I'm saying? Because the main thing you want is to catch. <laughs> so you don't, you're not really worried about, you know what I'm saying, him running a route right and everything like that. The main thing is run the route, run the out route, <clears throat> and when you bend it, one yard. You lose yards, one yard two yards, you know what I'm saying? By the end, the ball should be in the air anyway. 
So you teach them those things and they'll make the catch. And, you know, like this young man right here, because this out route and it's, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? So that's a key to it as far as the same, the drills, they come to life if you do them over and over and over and over. It gets boring, it gets monotonous, but the same thing is when the guys see the, the production on film, that's when they start taking pride in it a little bit more. Uh, this is just a plain and simple whip route, <clears throat> running the, the three-step slant, and then whipping back out. Uh, I talked about this earlier. The hardest route to teach in high school to me is the, is the, is the slant, come back, and the curl. The hardest. And this young man was, was I think this is my first year at Fern Creek, very, very quick young man, but it took us goodness gracious. I don't even know how many months for him to understand how to run a slant. And you can still see he's having trouble. Three good hard steps, 45 degrees, you know what I'm saying? And we had been beating him with the slant. And so the OC was just like, hey, man, have him run a rip route. And so <clears throat> all this is is, you know what I'm saying, you put into play as far as your drill, your 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 figure eight drill, because it's all about hips. Figure eight drills, the Z drills, so on and so forth. And you know what I'm saying? You just put it all into one package and you have it right here. And so Dura, you know what I'm saying, killed this man. Because he had been beating him to sleep. That's why the safety's right there. Beat him to sleep the whole game on a slant. As ugly as he ran that route, beat him to sleep, and then he just came back out and, you know what I'm saying, wide open. But the key to it is when you're running that route, it's actually, you know what I'm saying, seek the hips. Boom. When you come out of breaks, the main thing is how he seeks his hips. But his hands never stop moving. Again, I'm going to say this again. Hands and feet. Hands and feet. Nothing stops moving. It's all fluid. Everything's fluid. Now, mind you, this is a work in progress with this guy. But he understood after watching it on film a hundred times, man, you never stop your feet, never stop your hands. And then it helped him out. I'm not going to show the end of it because he caught it. But I, I, what he did after that, I, I had to go nuts because I was like, man, you know. So this is a comeback, and so we're going to watch Melvin run his comeback. Why he did this stuff, I don't know. But you can see he's on the bottom of the numbers. You know what I'm saying? The defender's here. I teach my guys, if he opens up, you run to the butt, literally, because he's going to lose you. Why Melvin did this, other stuff, I don't know. But let him play a little bit. So you see the defender open up, run right to the butt. Don't run out here. Don't run out here, but you want to run right to the butt. Literally, the path that he's on should have been the path he should have stayed on because the defender's going to lose him. But like I mentioned, the comeback is the, and the comeback is one of the most unstoppable routes in high school football, in my opinion. Because if you run it right, it's unstoppable. So when he made that jab, tip and went out there, I don't know why he did that. Because the defender was beat. As soon as he opened up, beat right now. And so... Um, Break down, come back down your still. And that's it. So <clears throat> here's my here's my, my information. You got my cell phone number, you got my email, and you have my Twitter. Um more than welcome to 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 reach out. Um I have some other stuff as well if you wanna 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 dive into that, but uh, appreciate the time. Hopefully I didn't bore you too, too much, but uh, um, definitely don't have a problem with we're going over film and stuff like that because some of the stuff that I put on there is, is from 2009 and 10 and 11. So I have more new film that I haven't put on there only because I just want to make sure that we don't give away too many of our secrets yet. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much the, the, the end of my presentation, Coach.